Hey guys, what's up? Hope you're all doing great and welcome to another episode of SQL for Data Analysis. Well, in this episode, we're going to take a look at MySQL Workbench dashboard, how it all works. Previous episode, we installed MySQL Workbench, but in this episode, I'm going to show you everything in user interface and everything you as a data analyst need to know. So let's check this out. All right, so once you open up MySQL Workbench, you're going to see this home screen. Welcome to MySQL Workbench. There's a short description about MySQL Workbench. There are two guidelines right here. But down below, you can see MySQL connections, So, which is going to show you all of your connections that you've connected with other and external server, which are going to be listed right here. But considering that we don't have any uh, external server and we're using local hosts, we can only see local instance right here. Also, there's a plus button right here. If I press on that, it's going to show, show me uh, set up a new connection, which is going to ask me for a username and password, but we don't have anything. I'm going to cancel. I'm going to press local instance, and it's going to take me straight to a new blank project of MySQL WorkMesh. All right. So uh, at first glance, you'll see some different tabs section right here, including a schema, query uh, editor window, this tab right here. And this action output, which is very important, but let's talk about let's talk about query editor. Sorry, guys, just an urgent trip happened to me, and I'm in travel now. But I found a good time to record the rest of this video. Okay, I was talking about the query editor. So this is where we're gonna spend a lot of our time right here, and I can't write anything. But once I write one of the SQL queries then you see that its color is going to be changed, meaning that, that you are writing SQL query. All right, so uh, I have some buttons on the top, you can see that. So I'm gonna explain to you the ones that are really important and we're gonna use them a lot. So the first we have folder button, which is gonna enable you to import your code. And we have saving buttons, which is going to enable you uh, to save your code. When we are actually writing our code, we should regularly save our code. And next to it, we have two lighting bolts that which are for executing our code. So I'm going to explain to you what is the difference between these two. So let's say I'm going to write a just, just a sample query that doesn't require importing any database. Select uh, current date as again current date, and then. Uh, I'm gonna write another one for time, current time as current time. Don't worry about what I'm writing right now. I'm gonna explain to you each syntax of SQL, so there's nothing to be worried about. I'm just gonna show you the difference between these two lightning bolts. Okay, so, all right, so if I press the first one, it's going to execute everything that you wrote so far or the selected portion of your script. So no matter where my mouse cursor is, if I put it right here, right here and execute, then you're going to see it executed the current time. And considering that first I asked for current date, then I asked for current time. So the previous query uh, hasn't been executed and the last one is executed. All right. And what if I want to see an, a specific code? I can actually select a portion of your code and then execute this one. So you can see I can execute, for example, I, I, I want to only see the current date. I can select it and then you can see current date is executed. All right, so let's talk about the next one. So what happens if I press this one? So it's going to execute that if your mouse cursor within the line, within any line or under that line, then, it, then it's going to execute that line. So if I put my mouse right here, my mouse cursor right here, and then I press this one, you're going to see it's only executed the current date which because of uh, I put I left it my mouse cursor right here or if I actually put it right here and then press this one you see that it executed the current time or if I actually uh, put my mouse cursor within any line and then press this one you're gonna see current dates as you can see is executed 
All right, so let's talk about the ones that are important. So we have something like a selection, which which is by default set to 1,000 rows. This is actually the limitation for, for the number of rows that you want it to be executed, depending on your database uh, size. So it's by default set to 1,000 rows so you can actually make it higher or lower depending on your database size so we have something for that that is going to beautify your code so if i press this you're going to see it, it made it on one line and it made it uppercase and also we have searching button so if i press this one i can search through the code that i've wrote for example current can see it detected the, 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 the word that I actually searched for. All right, so, and this one, okay, let's get right up this here. Done, all right, I don't want that. All right, so we have something, the last one, if I actually write and keep going dash all the way to right, then you're not gonna see the code that I wrote in the left side right so if i actually press this then it's gonna divide the line of the, the that long line in two lines which is gonna look better for actually reading your code all right so let's get out of here and talk about the next tab i think uh, i told you enough about this query editor so if anything left that i didn't tell you about it i think we will be facing in the next episode okay let's talk about the next tab so we have a schema tab where our databases are listed right here and administration tab which is going to tell you something about the management server and dashboard service status importing and exporting your data service status but something that is really important more important than administration is schema tab so when you install mysql workbench defaultly you're going to see this is important in your mysql workbench which is not going to be used for our learning this is something like a default like a sample uh database it doesn't have anything to use it's like a sample you can actually check them out and see what is inside all right so let's talk about the this menu on the top we have some shortcuts like this one uh, is going to create a new sql tab for executing queries so you can add as many files as you want on the top and each file and each tab has its own exclusive result without impacting on another tab and we have actually and this one is for importing our sql code and we have something that is going to tell you the information about our our code and our database and this one is going to create a new database which is called the schema editor. So we can set a new name. And then this one is going to create a new table and assign it to that database that you created. This one is going to create a new view and this one and this one is going to create a new procedure, new function. All of these shortcuts can be done by coding. These are only shortcuts that we can either use these shortcuts or we can actually write code to actually implement new function or new query or new database stuff like that and also we have another menu on the top that's in windows is located right here between these two section so again we have actually new model or open scripts open sql scripts undo your code view you can customize your view the query for execution the database things you can connect to database server tool all right that's all for now so now you have became familiar with the essential parts like this query editor where you're going to write your query and this is schema tab which is going to show you all of your databases which are listed right here and output window when you're going to run your query your code is going to be executed right here from the next episode we're going to start creating database and writing code